All right, so we're back again, guys. We're going to finish this crosscut sled off, but before we get going, uh, we're going to throw this at the beginning of the video. I was supposed to do it in yesterday's video, and I feel bad I forgot to, because Sunday's usually my best day for people watching, and I wanted to help a, a new channel out. Uh, Billy Bob Lockwood, 20-year-old kid, already owns his own business, a uh, excavating business out in the Pacific Northwest has a beautiful wood shop, 20 years old. This kid is a worker. He's starting to put out some good stuff. He's trying to refine his game, learn how to do this, these types of things. And uh, so he started up a channel. He's been a regular viewer here for a while. Really nice kid. I've talked to him on the phone and uh, super nice kid. I will put a link to his channel in the description below if any of you are interested in checking out Billy Bob. Say hi and tell him Jim sent you. So anyway, now we've Shout it out, Billy Bob. I like Billy Bob. What a good kid. So anyway, we're going to start by putting our front fence on this thing tonight. Last night we worked on getting getting this sled to at least slide in here. And that's why this ended up being a two-part video because that just took quite a while for me to get that shade down. It's a slow boat to China, but like I said, that is what's going to make you a really accurate crosscut sled. It could look like a million bucks, but if things are out of whack on it, it's not going to work for you. Things are going to be out of square, your cabinets or whatever it is you're building aren't going to come out very nice. And you're going to be pissed about it, you're going to kick your dog, yell at your kids, whatever it is you do when you get frustrated. I tend to yell at my kids because it makes me happy. So anyway, we're going to start putting the front fence on. Then we're going to use two screws to put the back fence on. I'm going to use Craig screws to attach the front fence. We're going to set it in three quarters of an inch because we're going to put a poplar face on the front of it and with kind of an arch on it. The reason we do that, these fences are only two and three quarter inches tall. So if I go with a pretty wide cut on there, remember you're cutting this piece of plywood right down the middle where the saw blade is. So you've got to have something to support it on both sides. Otherwise it's going to be doing this on you when you're pushing it through. It's not going to be very stable. So these are, you know, by the time this is all said and done, these end up being an inch and a half thick. It's two pieces of three quarter inch birch ply or maple plywood glued together. And I put screws in for the glue up, free up some clamps. And these are going to be coming out so that we can put our poplar boards on the front of it. Now what we'll do, this will go on here. We're going to crank it down from the front side. I'll probably put a couple along the back side here. And we're going to go from there. I'm going to show you a trick with a Craig jig. They're putting in pocket holes that will keep things a little more lined up for you, make it a lot easier. So anyway, stay tuned. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the other side of it. So we're going to get the front fence on first, and then we're going to make a cut in this piece. I'm going to screw this on both sides just because I just like doing it that way. So I'm going to try to step this back a quarter of an inch because I want to put a piece of poplar face on the front of this. Now keep in mind, whenever you're using the Craig screw system to put this stuff together, it is going to move on you. So just to give you a fair warning, what I do, I moved it out about a sixteenth of an inch. So isn't a big deal to me really. I, I mean this is the front fence, but the back fence is going to be quite important. So just work it down. Pretty consistent how far ahead it moves it. I mean, it's about the same every time. So you'll notice I have four screws, one on each side. I like to beef that up a little bit where the blade's going to pass through this, a little more support. So that's kind of a very important thing. Does it move over there and screw? 
Yeah. screwed on there that should never really go anywhere of course famous last words shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't that's right now you notice that this thing is kind of long it's kind of wide I like it like that because I want I want as much support I want as much support under that board as I can across. It just makes everything a little more accurate. You can see how nice and strong that is right there. And after all that adjustment, this is sliding really nice and we have no shuck at all going one way or the other. That really is such an important thing. Now I'll probably give this glue a couple more hours on the front here and we'll pop these screws off. And then because what we're going to do with our poplar strip, we're just going to glue it and clamp it on there. That's more for looks and just to beef this front up just a little bit. I'm not, this is an inch and a half, it should be plenty strong enough, but I'd like something a little higher there to build kind of an arch over top of this where the boards are going to cut. So what we want to do now is I'm going to set the saw blade so that it just cuts. We'll set it at like an inch. So all I want to do is just uh, break through the top there a little bit. So here is the absolute most important step of the entire process. And that is making sure that this guy here is perfectly square. Because if it's not, this is where everything gets off into the weeds. Now we're just going to get it close with the framing square. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do to get it perfect when we're done. Really, really starting to like this marking knife. The more I use it, the more I like it. Okay. So we have a nice line across there. And guys, remember how I told you earlier that when you're putting in the Craig screws, if you're using pocket holes, it's going to move the piece on you pretty well. So this is kind of what I do to avoid that while I'm trying to put something like this together. I just get this right on my line. And it helps if you have a really good straight board. And this one's pretty fresh off the table saw. And you'll see if it's not straight because it'll start messing with your uh, your line won't match up to the kerf on it or to the cheese. Uh, I can't talk. Your line won't match up. That's what I'm trying to say. And try to keep in mind that the slightest inconsistency on this step will have major implications moving forward with how well this sled performs. And all we're really concerned with here is getting it close. Now 
going to double check it. That's really nice. Don't be shy with your screws. I know it's going to get you some holes in the top of the sled, but keep in mind it is a shop tool. <clears throat> now I'm being really fussy with this right here, but chances are, chances are we're going to have to adjust this anyway before we do anything final with it. Not too bad. Now let's get some holes drilled in this thing. We'll start with just a couple and then we will go from there. Okay, so we have our fence on here and what I did, I just I did the pocket holes and the screws off camera. There's only four screws in the length of this fence holding this in right now because we need enough room. I didn't put them all in in case we have to adjust it. So anywhere I had double holes, I put a screw in one of them. That way if I, that way if I need to adjust, I could just pop one of those screws out, adjust where I have to do it, and I can leave one open. The other thing that bears mentioning also off camera, we cut a little sawdust channel in the bottom of this. that will keep sawdust from building up behind your boards and throwing your cuts off. There's a couple ways that you can test these out. And what I'm going to do here, we're going to put a piece in, just a scrap piece, and then what we do, we flip it over, and if the ends match, we know we're square. Let's see what happens here. They work right on. Oh. Nice and flush. Let's turn it around the other way. Got it that good that the first time. No way in hell. All right. <clears throat> so let's discuss this cross cut sled and its design and what we are doing here. Now, this is a very very simple cross cut sled. It's very easy to build. Now you saw me check and recheck and check and recheck that test board because I just couldn't believe that on the first shot it came out that square. I've never had one come out exactly where I want it the first time. Never. That is not something that often happens. It's usually one of those things where you sit there and you fiddle with it and you fiddle with it until you get it exactly where you want it. The big thing is you just go around, look for daylight. If you don't have any daylight, 
doing really well. Because little little bits can really can really throw you off. So I'm, I'm actually quite quite happy with that. So anyway, so a couple of the easy features of something like this is, like I said, there's really not much to it. I keep this fence a little low. It's easier for me to put a clamp on for stop blocks if you're doing repetitive cuts. And when you're doing the cabinet work, I like to do as many of the repetitive cuts at once as I can. I make my back fence very beefy because this is what I'm pushing on all the time. I also like to you guys saw what I did with the uh, the rails that go on the saw last night. Now what's nice about these, that right there, that curve right there makes you pretty much a zero clearance. So when you're cutting your hardwoods out, you're getting extremely minimal chip out on the back side without having to use tips or tricks like painters tape, things like that. I make a little bit of a wider piece to go over the back. It gives it a little more stability because remember you're cutting, your blade is going to go through this fence. And I try to, uh, I just like want everything as rigid as I could possibly get it. Now, it's not a panel cutter or anything like that, but it, it certainly will work very nicely for my needs. And that's what we're going for. Now, another method that you can do to find square with one of these is you can make five cuts five cuts in a piece. So you go one, two, three, four, and then five. That last piece you cut out, you check it on both ends with a caliper and it'll tell you exactly how far you are and then you can use a feeler gauge to adjust it where you need to go. I didn't get that fussy with it because like I said it is it is as, as, as square as it can be right now and I'm happy with it very happy with it and at the end of the day that's what matters because that, that's the thing you know you, you get you're doing the cabinet work or whatever it is you're doing and things get just a little bit out of whack on you it affects the finished product that's what people are seeing the first thing people are going to notice when they see your boards when you're putting things together they're going to notice little gaps. So if you have a little gap in that board, you know, let's get the piece I didn't beat on. The, you have little gaps in that board. That's the first thing they're going to they're going to notice. You know, so you're trying to get everything nice and tight, and that's you know, that's kind of the idea. At the end of the day, that's that's what you're kind of going for, and you can do it with homemade stuff. It's not not too bad to do. So, anyway, that is our crosscut sled. Makes me happy. Alright, so there we have it, guys. I, I did forget to mention, drill a hole in the darn thing so you can hang it up. It helps quite a bit. Keeps it off the floor out of the way. You're not going to be tripping on it. It's right in there. Ugh. It's right here next to the table saw, so all I have to do is grab it off, set it down, good to go. So our queen post of table saw sleds is growing. We have our dado sled, our tenoning sled, or jig, and now we have our crosscut sled. Coming up, we have to build a, we're going to have to build a small router table for the bench top. I'm going to try to make it in such a way that when I want to do a final roll around router stand, that I can incorporate it into that easily without having to redo the entire tabletop for it. We also, I also have all of the parts for our bandsaw that needs to be rebuilt, and that's going to be making its way out of the pit of despair at some point this week. And we're going to do a good video on how to rebuild one of those. It's pretty much replacing bearings and lining things up. It's really not that hard, but there is a couple tools that make it easier. I'll let you know about those and where you can get them. Also, don't forget, uh, if you guys are interested, please go check out Billy Bob Lockwood. He's a young and up-and-comer guy. Said 20 years old, works hard. Hard to find that this day and age. A 20 year old kid who actually works. So, anyway, have a good night, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.